My presentation is called Two Wheels Good, and I'm going to start now. I'm going to put the remote down, and we're going to go for five minutes. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, so if any of you guys commute to work, you'll know that there's a major, major problem with traffic in Sydney. Three hours every morning, three hours every night, the roads are just completely jammed, packed with cars. Now, most of these cars have only the driver in them, right? It's crazy. What we typically say is, well, we better build more roads. If the roads are full of cars, build more roads, that'll solve the problems. So we've got the M2, the M4, the M5, the M7. And guess what? They're jammed too. So let's look at public transport. Maybe public transport is, maybe public transport is the answer. So there's loads of different plans being mooted at the moment. We're spending $5 billion on a metro line here and $3 billion on a rail line here. There's about $150 billion worth of spending that the government is planning. Now, the problem with public transport is it goes from the suburb to the city. And that's great if you work in the city. But what if you want to go from your house to work? And that's why people drive, because they can go exactly where they want to go. They don't have to go via the city. The other major problem with public transport is you have to go when they want to go. You have to go via the timetable. So people tend to drive because they know they can leave when they want to, come home when they want to, without having to worry about the, tra the uh, timetables. So I want to talk to you about a transport system tonight that's not cars and it's not public transport. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Here we go. He's going to tell us we should ride our bikes to work, right? Kind of. Not exactly. You're on the right track, but not exactly. What I'm talking about is something similar. I'm talking motorbikes and motor scooters. Now, whew, why are these overlooked? They get lumped in the same category as cars, but they're not the same as cars. When you drive in a, a small hatchback, you're carrying a ton of empty metal around with you all the time. A waste of, waste of energy, right? Motorcycles and motor scooters are really cheap and green. You can fill up a bike for 10 bucks, but it'll probably last you all week because you're not carrying this one-ton cage around with you everywhere you go. The other major thing is you can park really, really easily. Think of how big a car is. You can fit six or seven bikes in the space of one car. So it's really, really easy to park when you get into the city. So if we decide that motorcycles and motor scooters are the way of the future, what can we do to make more people ride to work rather than driving? I've got four simple ideas, which I'm going to share with you tonight, and hopefully that will convince you that you should go out and get a motorcycle. OK. Now, the first problem we see is this one coming up now. OK. You see this all the time. Motorcycles parked on the footpath underneath the no parking sign. These guys are probably going to get a ticket. It's probably going to cost 80 bucks. They might even get towed away. Now, why does that really matter? You can see it's just a little deserted alleyway. Does it really matter? there's a bunch of motorbikes parked there? Does it really hurt anybody? My number one suggestion is, let's be more like in Melbourne. In Melbourne, you can park a motorcycle on the pavement as long as you're not blocking the pedestrians and not blocking the traffic. What's wrong with that? So, number one suggestion, sensible parking. When I was a kid, it cost five cents to take a motorbike over the Harbour Bridge, and it cost 20 cents to take a car. So it was four times cheaper to take a motorbike over the Harbour Bridge. These days, it costs you exactly the same. So during peak hour, it costs you four bucks to take a motorbike over the Harbour Ridge. Now, is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah, there we go. Number two suggestion, let's have fair tolls for motorbikes. If you take a truck on the M2, it costs you three times more than a car. Therefore, I think the precedent is set, the motorbike should be cheaper. Now, what do you think of when you think of Holland? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Drugs, prostitutes, yeah, like... And that's cool, that's awesome, but there's something else that's really, really awesome about Amsterdam you may not know. Not the motorcycles as well. You're allowed to filter on a motorcycle, so you're allowed to go between the lanes of traffic. And in fact, they encourage it. So number three suggestion is allow safe filtering. As long as it's safe, motorbikes should be allowed to go through the lanes of traffic. It speeds up the flow for everybody. But aren't motorcycles dangerous? That's what everybody says when they hear about motorcycles. Look at what these guys are wearing. Shorts, t shirt Thongs, no gloves. Now that's legal. You can ride in your undies as long as you're wearing a helmet. But it's not safe. So we need to reward safety. This guy's wearing a jacket, boots, pants, gloves. That all costs money. So number four suggestion is let's subsidize that, give you a rebate on your insurance, maybe on your registration. We should reward people who do the right thing and be safe. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to do here is 
two wheels are the way to go. You don't want to drive around in a car carrying this one ton of empty metal. You need to go and get yourself a motorbike, and that'll speed up the traffic for everybody and just make life so much easier for everybody. Just want to end on one final note. Everything I've said so far is true, but it's all very, I don't know, clinical. It's all precise. Really, the reason you want to get a motorbike is because they're cool, right? If you're into guys, guys look great wearing leather. If you're into girls, there's nothing hotter than a girl on a motorbike, right? Thank you, everybody.